Okay, let's, get, let's begin. Mr. Brennan, would you lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I have to, I just have to let you all know that we're going to break and go into an executive session for five minutes. And we'll be right back. So continue your, your conversations. And we won't be long. We just have a few things we need to talk over with our solicitor. Thank you. We're taking a break now. And we'll move back in. Give us five minutes. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you for waiting. We apologize, but we had several issues that we had to speak about. Uh, uh, some of them were administrative. Some of them were uh, personnel issues. Uh, several of both. So, thank you again. So let's start the meeting off. Becky, can you give us a roll call? Sure. Councilwoman Fry? Present. Councilman Stein? Councilman Bodadilla? Here. Councilman Youngkins? Here. Vice President Ondo? Here. President Brennan? Here. Mayor Falls? Here. Solicitor Vashevic? Here. Borough Engineer Colin Lampart? Present. Police Chief Fuller? Here. Guard Chief Pledge? Present. Public Works Supervisor Bicey? Here. Building Code Official, Code Enforcement Officer, and Zoning official, Officer Cannon. Here. Borough Office Administrator Work. Here. All right, I'd like to start uh, the meeting off. Councilman Hannon here. Councilman Hannon. I'm Hanna. sorry. Oh. I forgot to add you. I'm sorry. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> Councilman Hannon. Welcome. I've got a nameplate. just forgot to put him on here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, just about one announcement. and. Um, Councilman Ondo, I give the floor to you for your first announcement you'd like oh, to talk about. Um, you know, I, I had received um, a letter from the uh, Homestead Cemetery, the committee at the Homestead Cemetery, and what they're doing is they're having their annual fundraiser. So if anybody would be interested in donating, um, you could mail it to the Homestead Cemetery, and I'm sure, if I can correct me if I'm wrong, we can drop them off here. We can, no. we can get it here, but we want it to be mailed to them. Yeah, so we could we mail it to the Homestead Cemetery Board, um, and also to um, they're asking please consider joining us for the annual spring cleanup on Saturday, March 26, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if anybody's interested in going out and and usually this early in the year. Um, what it is is you, you, you walk around the cemetery and you actually pick up stuff that people have put on for like the holidays, Christmas and stuff like that. So they don't like because now grass cutting season is going to be right around the corner. So they will like to get everything up off of the off the grounds, you know, so the people can, can cut the grass. But anyway, they're um, they're shooting to their their goal for 2022 is to raise at least thirteen thousand um, dollars. There again, with the way things are going. Um, prices of fuel and materials and stuff like that that they need is going up so it's not a real great amount of money that they're going to raise to to keep up a, a cemetery which i don't even know how many acres it is it's it's huge but um i just wanted to let everybody know that i did get the letter in it so if anybody has any questions about it or something you can contact me or contact um the people at the cemetery themselves thank you Kevin, are they going to be doing a mail out to people, or are they? It's, well, it's I'll tell you what. It, it, it did come in. It came in my name, um, and it says, "Dear friends of the cemetery." So I would, I would assume that everybody's going to get it. Yeah. You know, so maybe we can run some copies off and we can get the. Sure, bottom. absolutely. But I, I, and this could be the reason that I did get it is because. Uh, President uh, Brennan and I are actually on the board, so they might have sent it to us a little earlier than actually was mailed out. So um, feel free to tell me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So um, council items, I wanted to start off. Um, I have I've got a couple calls on the batch building, the batch foundation, and um, there was concerns by the public regarding. Uh, the batch building and them 
we ought to have a press release before we get into the We did that. We did. We did that. Oh, we started the pledge, then we, then we went I'm into okay. the um, executive session. Ready. I'm sorry. It's okay. So, um, the batch building, I believe, was brought, they, they came to the council chambers and they told us their, their plans, what they had planned on doing, um, and I spoke with Kevin Ondo, who's on the planning commission, I asked him to talk to the uh, president of the Planning Commission, if they had any information on the building, uh, anything that was brought to us, um, and nothing had been brought to our attention through the Planning Commission or through Council's vote. Um, I was told by our zoning officer that they had indeed filed for a building permit and everything was approved through the state, which I believe you told us that in the past, and that everything was okay. They were going moving forward. Now I heard that they are bringing a doctor's office into the building as well, and I question um, what they're doing. I, I question the integrity of the neighborhood. Um, it's going to certainly be changed with, with the batch building being there and it being per se a clubhouse. It's not a school. I don't think that. I think that was what it was termed when they when they came here the first time. And I know that we've never had any information about anything being brought into there as far as doctor's offices and my question to all of council and the people of the town and to our zoning officer and our solicitor which I've talked to both of them and let them know that I have issues and questions is I want this to be brought out in public because this is certainly an important issue and I certainly feel that it needs to be discussed and I want to know if it's proper for them to move into the building with eight eight point five parking spots um, for a building of such magnitude and such cost of a project of two and a half million dollars I'm not sure what the number is but I certainly think um, the neighborhood is going to be affected um, I certainly feel that with doctors coming in, with patients coming in and out, visiting doctor's offices, that changes the whole perspective of a school for, you know, children or kids or young adults, whichever. It changes the whole perspective of the, of the, of the building. So, um, I'm going to ask for any co public comment if anyone would like to publicly act, bring any comment about that for right now. Um, Mr. Cannon, if you have anything you'd like to bring, I ask you to come prepared with, with the uh, building permits and all the, all the, the documentation that uh, was given to you that we have. I also spoke to Greg and talked to him uh, before the meeting, giving him a little update on my thoughts and where we're at. And Greg is certainly aware he's up to speed for now so um, this is an inf informational portion right now this is not pointing the finger at anyone this is this is a time for the public to speak out and say anything if they have anything to talk about if there's any issues that can be answered by our our solicitor or our zoning officer or our engineer for that matter um, I certainly would hope that you would have some input on this as well um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the public first if they have any questions to bring up, and then I'm gonna let Dave and our engineer and solicitor maybe help answer any questions that, that the public and I might have. Go ahead. Please come up. State your name. Uh, Len Cole, 409 East James Street, come on off. The doctor's office you're talking about, that's my primary care. Now, they told me two months ago that they were moving into Charlie back underneath the gym. Okay. That's what, and I said, are you, are you sure you're going into the Charlie back side? And they said, yeah, that's where we're going. Now, my concern is you want to have a lot of senior citizens going in here, plus myself and my wife. And I don't think that's a, a building or a primary care doctor side. Okay. That's my opinion. You know, we, we have other spaces here in Mon Hall that they could they could move in, but UPMC rents that. That's who 
under the UPMC. I'm not aware of that. It's UPMC. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Michael? Yeah. Uh, Please come up to the podium and speak. Let us know your name. Uh, question on the building itself. Is it zoned for medical occupancy? Do they have enough room uh, for an ambulance to come through? Do we have uh, space for biomedical disposal? Uh, I mean, to me, a, a medical building is different, even if it's just a doctor's office, than a child care area or recreation area, whatever you want to call it. So how are the rules different and have the plans included this and we just weren't aware? Anybody who can answer, I engineering, zoning, whatever. Yeah, I'll answer everything whenever I get the floor. Okay. Anyone? Anyone? Any other questions to be brought up? <coughs> they invited me up for a tour, probably about two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, the building is inside is nice. It is nice, and uh, you know, it is going to be a clubhouse. They say in our school. But the only thing different I remember hearing from her that I mean, I don't think it matters whether it's a primary care group. She said it was going to be a pediatric <laughs> physician in there. So I, I don't know. It doesn't matter if it's pediatric or primary care. <coughs> but that, that's what that's what she said to me at the time when she showed me the <coughs> space where the doctor's office would be. Okay. I think if I, if you would let me talk, I one minute. A let, lot let, of questions. Let, let let the people speak first, and then we can address things, and we can go farther. This is the only thing that's really on the agenda, other than uh, Mr. Fred Kinzel talking about Steel Valley East Baseball. So go ahead. Uh, please come up. Please come up. Okay. Please come up and address, address your name so that we know who you are and yeah. you're 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 a neighbor. Rose Fire 211 uh, Orchard Street. Okay. Well, here we go. We have been. I'm a resident of Orchard Street. Been here 35 years, and we have had nothing but lie after lie after lie considering this building. It was a jail school. It was a clubhouse. It was a community center. Um, the alley hasn't been open in three years. The ambulance shoots out when they have a call. And if you're coming down the orchard, you better be prepared because there's going to be an accident. Because usually they shoot out there and go down the alley. Well, they haven't been able to do that in three years. And now we're hearing it's a doctor's office. What's the code with having all these businesses in there for parking? We don't have any parking. That's why we're here. Yeah. I mean, we don't. And as residents, I don't think that we should be penalized. Baseball's going to start. Soccer's going to start. Tournaments are going to start. We have no parking. None. But yet they were granted all this permission to build this monstrosity. And that's what it is. That's what it is. So, I mean, somebody needs to address that. That's what we're here for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And then maybe we can start getting uh, some answers, and we can certainly ask a couple more questions. This is not a, this is not something we can. We're going to walk out of here in ten minutes. So, Dave, if you'd like to start, or I think it would be good for you to start. Yes. <clears throat> I talked to Ryan. I talked to Latosh because this goes back three years, ago, three and a half years ago. Ryan McConnell was on the planning committee. At that time, there was a planning meeting, and there was rumors about what. Bash Foundation was going to do because there was three or four houses there. They took down all the houses. So, without planning commission's knowledge, they didn't realize Ryan worked for the Bash Foundation. He said, "Before any rumors get started, I'll bring Latosh in here. I know what the plans are going to be. I'll bring them in front of you guys." Okay. So they went in front of planning for informational purposes only and said, "Here's what we're going to do." They're, cons they're not considered a school in the state of Pennsylvania because they're not an accredited school. It's, concerning a learn it's considered a learning center. What they do is after school programs where the kids go, they, there's a little classroom set up, and they learn different things. You know, I mean, they may learn, you know, or they study in rooms or whatever. Okay, so a learning center or a school is permitted anywhere in any residential area, okay? So, 
before any buildings constructed, you go and get either engineering or architectural stamp drawings. These are professional people. What they do is they get the zoning code from the road or from any municipality and they look at setback rules, parking, and everything. So they do their work up front. Okay. The, the plans were drawn up, and what I do is I'll, uh, I, I have them go to a third party inspector or third party plan review. These are people, professional people, that plan review every single day of their lives. Okay? So they went to COSIS. COSIS approved everything for a learning center. All right? So they came in, the actual estimated cost of the first construction was $5.2 million. The building permit cost $19,000, which was paid. Okay, I, after COSIS signed off, after I got the architectural engineering stamp drawings, COSIS signed off on 4 19, uh, the 4 19, 19 the um, COSIS signed off on all the drawings. The application was sent on on the 21st, and I okayed it on the 31st after I received the check for the $19,150. Okay. So there, it's a permitted use in the zone. It's, this area is considered an R5 area. Okay. I can't speak on behalf of Charlie because I don't know everything, but UPMC wanted to get involved. All right. They figured that building was going to just be for children or for younger kids. UPMC wanted to put doctor offices. I can't tell you why they decided here or there, but doctor's office are permitted. And, oh, I should go back. So they went to planning. They told planning, here's what we're planning to do. They came in front of council. They told council what they were planning on doing. The architect was here, Natasha was here, and Ryan was here. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Please let me talk. Yes, they did about the school. Yes, they did. They said, here goes what our plans are, blah, blah, blah. They also came back at another time and had an open discussion because a lot of people had questions about the school. All right? Our zoning says for a school that size, you need, she has two staff members. So they need two parking spots for the learning center. Okay? When I got the original plans, there was eight parking spots. And I said, well, you, that's good. You have more than the two. And they said, well, there may be a reason for that. They didn't tell me why, blah, blah, blah. A year later on, on April 9, 2021, I got an addendum to the original plans. That was for doctor offices. That was signed off on by COSIS on 4-14-21. I issued a permit on 416. That was for an initial $250,000. The permit fee was $4,120, which they paid. It was for doctor offices. 60 by 40. Okay. So now I have to ask the architect, I said, is there enough parking? He said, yes. We're required to have eight parking spots. We have eight, and we have two handicapped. I said, well, they put an additional handicap in because they have their calculation. Like I said, these are professional people that do this every single day of their life. Okay? <clears throat> Doctor's office, if you read, if you read planning commission, do they have to go in front of planning commission? To receive, the, the planning commission's duties is to receive copies of all applications for amendments, which means subdivisions and if you're combining lots, or conditional uses. So they do not have to come in front of planning. At that time, when I got this Ryan McCall... Question, question, question. Did they not combine lots? No, they, they did that well. They did that ahead of time. So they had already had the yeah, lots combined? Yeah, they had all the lots combined. Before go they, ahead. So they went, they didn't have to go in to, for conditional use. The school's not a conditional use. The um, doctor's office is a permitted use. If you corner zoning in an R5 area, it clearly states, Building and uses of the type permitted and as regulated in the least restrictive residential district. That would be school. 
professional offices limited to accounting, architectural, bookkeeping, clerical service, dental, drafting, engineering, insurance, legal, medical, rural estate, and STEM graphics. So it's a permanent use under our code. So the next thing you have to consideration from right here is parking issues. They have to have two for each staff, or one for each staff member for the school. That's two. For our, for it's a 60 by 40 doctor's office. So that's 2,400 square feet. Okay. Our ordinance says for a medical office, you have to have one parking spot for every 250 square feet. If you do the calculation, the school learning center would have to have two. The medical wellness center, you take 60 times 40, equals 2,400 square feet, divide that by 250. That comes up to 9.6 off or parking spaces. Okay? You take the two plus nine spots. That's 11.6 spots. Right? So you're saying, oh, they don't have enough spots, right? Well, our ordinance also says if you're located within 650 feet from a bus stop, you could reduce that number by 25%. So if you do that, you take 25% by, or it comes up to 2.9 spots. So you take 11.6 minus the 2.9, you have 8.7 spots. So that comes up to 8 spots. I got a question. Good. What about the doctors, the nurses, That's the, the, the our medical ordinance, staff? Our ordinance says, our ordinance that it doesn't mention anything for medical, <coughs> for off street parking, for hospitals, nursing, or cholesterol. Call the lessons house one per two employees. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, uh, for medical or dental centers or clinics one per 250 square feet. You don't have to worry about staff. Oh, where are they going to park? Where are they? Well, that's, that's a, that, that, it says medical or dental center or clinic one per every 250 square feet. That's what our zoning says. But it, don't they have to be dedicated spots also? That's public yeah. parking. That's not a dedicated Shh. spot. Wait, that's what our design says. So theoretically, they have to have eight spots. Okay. Excuse me. My primary care has five people working in the office seven, five days a week. Five people. Yeah. What they put? What, uh, from what I was told, they may have two doctors over and one nurse receptionist type person. Okay. Now myself and Dave Youngkins just recently discussed this issue. Okay. They have eight spots. Oh, uh, go back. Uh, prior to prior to Chief Campbell resigning, or not resigning, retiring, I say, I'm sorry, retiring, I asked them in May, June, and July, were there any parking issues on Orchard Street, 19th Avenue, 20th Street? Can you check for those three months? He got back to me and he said there was no complaints. I said because we had the batch going being worked on by the Sarah and their contractors. We had our building being worked on by Fran Joe, and like she mentioned, there's all kind of tournaments going on here from Thursday through Sunday. There was not one call for a parking issue on any of those streets, which made me feel good. Yeah, right? but we, we can't have any company. We can't, you can't have anybody come to your house. Let me, let me, please stop. Okay, myself and Dave talked briefly about this. And my thing says, well, if there is a problem, right in front of Charlie's, house or his batch foundation there's three open spots okay also on the northern side of orchard street there's enough room for five parking spots on 20th avenue i've been watching this for the last two months there's four open spots on both sides or two and two spots open so now if you think about that that would be 12 <coughs> additional spots and then like mr yunkins his thing was well we could maybe make all west street parking on one side. That would be an additional 10 spots. So we're talking 22 spots. Okay, now with that also being said, there was mention about medical or, uh, uh, um, concern about doctors. If I'm not mistaken, there was two doctor offices on the, on the other side of the street, which there's no parking for them and they existed for years. I know, but you still have to go by, you know, I can't. I think, I think our ordinances need to be changed. Yeah. 
Yeah. For sure. This is probably something from 1952. It, no, 1999. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, there's parking issues. I can talk to the mayor. We run into the same problem up on Main Street. We run to, into the same problem. But we run into the same problem. All right. Okay. Go ahead. So my question is. Please is come up. Please come up. Give us you your name. Emma Carter. I am. I live on 13th Avenue. Okay, so the question is, is if these lovely people change the ordinance, are they grandfathered in? Yes. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question. I, you're saying that the, the spots, you know, two on each side, four more, da, da, da. These people are handicapped. They're not going to be able to walk across. There's the, two handicapped spots already. Right but how many people are in that office that are more than two more than two people are handicapped? Where are they supposed to park? And that'll include the kids, by the way. Well, hold on. That that when you talk about handicapped, out here we had of course 25 spots for a baseball game. You have to have one handicapped spot for at least for one for 25 parking spots. That's it for you. So they have room for access. Yes. It, remember, guys, this is UPMC is a nationally known organization. I don't care. So they do their due diligence to make sure everything's up to code. Also, if, yeah. no, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. I'd like to ask a question. How come? How come? Nobody was made aware of this up until now, until it was questioned. I mean, it was never brought to light. Before I was on council, and it hasn't been brought to light since I've been on council about that this is what they're doing over here. This is the first that everybody's hearing about yeah, it. You know, they, they came and told us about the school. Yeah. No, no, they told us about the yeah. school, right. but not about the doctor's right. office. And I could not make that come in front of council. Like I said, Brian did it because he was on planning commission. Okay, they came in front of planning. Just some information. If you go back when they, they talked to council, there was no votes or anything. There was no motion. There they didn't have to vote. No. They didn't have to. Didn't have to. Because they claimed it was a school. It was it's a not a school. It's a learning. It's just, we had actually the art. Right. We can't say it's school rooms. We had to say um, learning center, learning learning rooms. If um. Well, it either is or it isn't. Well, it's a it's a learning center. We don't have anything in our code. It actually describes what they do, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go on record as saying that I do recall when, when Latasha came here, and I do recall because I've been on a planning commission longer than anybody in, ever was, and I do remember when they did come to a planning commission, and I'm going to go on record as saying I was against it at the planning commission, and when I sat back there, usually where Mr. Brennan said that's where I usually sat, and I was against them building that building to begin with. Now it's now expounding on where, what else is next? What's next? And this is the first that I'm hearing about it, and this is the first that council's hearing about it. Something's wrong with this picture. And also, Dave, when I said about the parking, I also said that if it's just for the kids, that we could do the parking. I didn't know it was going to be family health. And there's only a lot of old people and stuff going in there. I didn't know if it was but that's why, kids. But that's why actually they have two handicap parts. So you right. only need one, but they put right. two in just for that thing. Oh, so yeah. But I didn't want to go against the kids. Right, yeah. But so, if UPMC's putting it in there for everybody, then it is going to be ahead. Yeah, well, actually there's only going to be, there's going to be <clears> six <throat> ways, or six exam rooms, I guess, they call them, in a, a, a reception area. That's pretty big. That's pretty big. Wow. I, so. I mean, yeah, the, the, the office across the thing has, uh, from what I've heard, was there was four or five waiting, or, you know, patient rooms. But that was then, now is yeah. now. Yeah. That was then, now is now. And this is a new building. We just feel lied to. I feel lied to. Sure, ma'am. Come up and state your name.
standards for 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 a um, school. For a school. They came here and said they were going to have this clubhouse. They lied. They they took on as a partner UPMC. UPMC has almost as many lawyers as they have doctors. They build things all the time. They have to go through. Every time they build something, they come in and they have to submit plans. They have to submit parking. They have to, if they had come in and said this was going to be a commercial building, would they have been able to build that on the blueprint that they built, or would they have had different clearances that they would have had to abide by as a commercial building? Not on the outside, no. It's the same. When you are when you talk about building setbacks, it's the same thing for, well, I, it depends on the district. It goes by district setbacks. I'm pretty sure if you would build a brand new building, the commercial setbacks, the commercial conditions are totally different. So how about all of us say we're going to start a nonprofit and we're going to come in and build something as a school, and then after we get the approval of that, six months down the line, we take on our multi-billion dollar partner who is now going to provide us income so that we open the door for them to put in a commercial use in a building that was zoned for a learning center. And now it's turned into something that was never intended to be a commercial use in an area where there's no parking, where there's no expectation of more parking, there's no effort to go. And UPMC would never do this in Cranberry, in Bethel Park. They would never be allowed to do this. But somehow they changed everything they did and lied about their intention, and they're getting away with it, and nobody... They didn't have to come before council. They didn't have to come before the planning commission. Something's wrong. Something's not smelling right here. And they're still not here, and they're still not telling us what's going on. This is wrong. I hope I hope uh, Mr. Abashevich can shed some light on legally because this needs to this needs to be stopped. They 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 should not benefit from lying to the borough, and that's what they're doing. I'm gonna like to make a comment on that. For the for the R five area that they're in, it's residential professional office district. The R five residential professional office district is a residential district which ha has its primary purpose providing suitable locations and development standards for a mix of residential uses and professional offices. Like I can say, like I said, believe me. I'm not for it, I'm not against it. I have to make my professional decision on what our zoning code says, what other professionals, like I said, Gateway Engineering, they, they're very well known in the Pittsburgh area as a very good professional company. Their engineers or architects looked at it, made sure everything was up to code, because if it wasn't up to our building codes, they would have had to come and ask for a variance in front of the zone. It passed all of their opinions that it passed. It had met all requirements. Who said it did? Their engineers and their architects. They're the ones building the building, right? right? Aren't they supposed to go against like the borough to see if it fits the borough? Right. They they look at your zoning to make sure they meet all setbacks, all parking requirements, it never all came everything. To a public hearing. It never. It never it's a permitted discussed. use. They don't have to come in front. Of, the only time, like I mentioned earlier. The only time you have to go in front of planning is if it's a conditional use. Both the, the learning center and the offices are permitted uses. They do not have to go in front of thing. They did it as, like, they, they actually came, like I said, they went in front of planning, because Ryan was on planning. They came, I asked them to come in front of council. I asked them to come in front of council because I knew there would be a lot of questions, and then they came again to answer questions. I mean, I could have, I could have, the Batch Foundation, Latasha, come next month if, if everyone would like that. Yeah. I think it'd be a good okay. idea. Okay. But that's council's decision. Can I ask one more question? One, one, one second. Go ahead in the back. Yeah. Uh, with, has anyone considered what drugs are going to be in the doctor's offices? when you have a child center right next to them and it's attached? I'm sure they'll meet all state requirements because Bill, would you like to comment? You work for UPMC? I, I work for UPMC, so any vote I obviously would have to abstain. However, we, we do follow all the codes. Uh, 
There is a part of UPMC that can take comments from the public in reference to things. And uh, I will get the information and pass it on to Council on how that they can be addressed by the public. I mean, I mean that, that awesome. might be good. I have a question for the solicitor. In the code, is there a difference between dedicated parking and on-street parking? If you build a building, aren't you supposed to have dedicated spots? I'd have to review it to answer that question. I, I can just tell you I'm listening here. I'm familiar with it because Council President brought it to my attention recently. I did talk to Dave because I knew the issue was coming up. And it sounds to me like he followed the rule book. And so we all understand Council creates a zoning ordinance, which we have. And it was created and probably amended many times over the last <clears throat> 100 years. That's his rule book. His job, when someone comes in and wants to construct something or open a business, he looks at the rule book, which was made by former members of council, and that's what he has to follow to decide, A, is this a permitted use? And you heard him use that term. That's very important. If somebody applies to open a business or whatever it is, if it's a permitted use, they don't need any special approval from council because council's already given that approval, saying you can have this use in this area, this zone, as long as you meet all the building code requirements, which he is the check. He's the gatekeeper. Sounds like he checks it. He sends it out to an independent reviewer, and they approved it. It's not UPMC's reviewer. Is that right, Dave? You sent it out in the... Actually, it's the opposite. I, um, the architect and the engineer, either or, have to have still, they're still okay. on, on the drawings, and then I have to go to the third party first. Only reason because after the third party reviews and everything, if they have any questions, then they go back and work it out between them. To I get the final sign off from the third party. Okay. And then that's when I could, then I make sure everything was stamped on every and single thing. the third party is not UPMC. No, the third party okay. was the code says they, like I said, they're a very right, reputable. <clears throat> so anyway, right. continue on. So uh, these are the requirements in his job he has to make sure that are satisfied because this is his rule book and it sounds to me like in listening explanation, he followed all these, including the calculation of the parking spaces. And again, this is his rule book and it sounds to me like Perhaps members of council, some or all, members of the public don't like our rule book. And that's fine. The rule book has to be updated and amended and changed from time to time. Maybe it's time to do that. Maybe we need a thorough analysis because of the parking congestion in this borough. I've been around for a long time here in Mono, and I know it's an ongoing issue. But he can only deal with the rule book that's in place now. That sounds like what he's done. Now, your original question, I don't know about the, the dedicated parking versus on street. I'm just not I, sure because I'm I think maybe that. Dave can answer that. The eight spots are have to be on their property. That eight spots. They're gonna be located behind the property and on the side. So that's off street parking it's called. Behind the property where? Right in the back. And there's an alley. There's enough room we measure believe me. We have engineers up there measuring we have everybody up there measuring. There's parking gonna be in the back of the building. On the side of the building, there's also going to be important where she has her little driveway and her garage. And garage. that makes sense to me. I mean, I don't, you couldn't at, ask me to use public parking, on street parking. So right. they have to have yeah. parking specifically yeah. reserved for their tenants or their customers that are on their private property. Well, the only reason I'm really bringing this up, too, is while they're having all, this, all these workmen come every day, then all of a sudden there's signs up on the fence for the field it says no workmen are allowed to park there. Only, you know, not allowed to park there. So where did they come from? Where did they get permission to do that? If you're talking about spots for parking, you know. I don't know. These are probably temporary situations during construction. I don't know. I mean, if there's a problem, usually the police get involved and, and address it. But it's a temporary issue. And a lot of times, that's not addressed in ordinance when you have construction. You've got a lot of construction workers coming. But again, his job is to be the gatekeeper and follow the rule book. And just hearing this all, like you are, it might be you know, unsatisfactory and you're displeased. But if he follows the rule book that was created and approved by prior councils, then that's all he could do. But I guess my other question is: Was there is there no nothing that says you have to bring? You knew about this. 
You didn't have to bring this to anybody's attention? I'm not permitted to, to be honest with you. You're not permitted to? No, because if I have insight, or it's called inside information, if I know, and I'll use Mr. Quinn as an example, they're developing something up there. I know what's going on there. If I told Matt, hey Matt, they might be building something. He might say, hey, I might put a gas station right there. That'd be inside information. I know well ahead of time, before anybody, usually what's going on up in things. I can't tell people what's going there. I know what's going I'm on I'm not there. saying people. I'm saying members of council. I These are our elected officials. I can't tell them either because, like I said, it's an insider um, thing. Mr. Solicitor, is that the case? Well, uh, he, he attends schools yeah. and, and is instructed, and he probably knows it better than me. I'd have to look. I'm not surprised if there is some <coughs> confidentiality requirement in his job, but off the cuff, you know, I can't confirm it, but it's logical for the reasons he's telling me, but I'd have to look at the section of what it is, but I know he goes to, yeah. to courses to be, you know, updated education on his job. So Every I'm three years, I have to be recertified. I'm, I'm assuming he was taught that. Yes. His, well, there's confidentiality and there's the law. Well, like, and you, that's what I'm asking you as being the legal representation for the borough. I'm not talking about somebody who's code enforcement. I'm talking I about... And, and I've been doing this for 36 years, and I can answer a lot of questions, but I can't necessarily answer everyone. There's okay. a section in the code that requires that, or what the source of that requirement is. I just don't know that off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling you. I can't mm -hmm. know everything as we sit here, not been prepared or knowing what's coming to research. Can you find out? Yep. Sure. Talk to Dave, find out what the source is. I can check it. So, Thank you. So Dave, I'd say several months ago, we were here and we talked, I don't know, it was two months ago. Um, we asked about the alley, and we were going to go back and look at the alley. So, can you tell me? So, the alley looks really torn to hell. Yeah. Are they planning on resurfacing the whole alley? Yeah, um, I don't know if you were on council or not. We were going to, actually, the borough was going to pave that alley. and. <laughs> Prior to them doing it, they came. They told us, "Hey, hold off on it. We'll pay the alley." Um, I talked to, like I said, Latasha yesterday. Hopefully, by the end of this summer, they're going to be done with that building. But you know, the phase one and phase two of the building. So, hopefully, soon the alley will be up. How long do they plan on keeping the alley to, uh, not close? I, like I said, till probably the end of August. But it may be sooner than that because. When the second phase, they're only have, they might not have to use the alley that much, so they may have to only close it for you know an hour or two at a time for the day. Okay. Can I ask a question, maybe for the solicitor? You have a public meeting so that the residents understand what's coming in, and they come in, and the the people building this building say, "I'm a nonprofit, and I'm going to build a nonprofit." I'm, this is what we're doing. And then they take on another nonprofit. <laughs> another nonprofit, but for a commercial use. They're bringing in a private doctor's office. That doctor's office is moving from where they're at to come mm -hmm. into here as a commercial practice. And the residents don't know anything about it, they're not told anything. Their neighbors, the people that have to drive past there, it's going to bring in a lot more traffic now that it's not only a learning center, but it's a commercial establishment. And the original nonprofit didn't think it was important to share that information with the residents of Munhall Borough. Is that legal that we don't have any voice at all in what goes in there, that they come in under one premise and the questions that we're talking about now we didn't ask them back then because they didn't tell us that they intended on going into business with UPMC and bringing in doctor's offices. So now it's the residents that are left with all the parking, the traffic. We have no recourse at all. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's legal because this council, prior councils, not this council, has made the rule book, the zoning code, and said that is a permitted use. Doctors' offices can go in there. The rule has already been determined. As long as they satisfy all the code requirements that he is to check, which he has, he's performing an administrative function. 
If they meet all those code requirements, he has no choice but to approve it. He doesn't have any duty to bring it to the public or even counsel to ask if they like this or don't like it because they've already given him the rule book. And once they make the application, you can't change it in the middle of the application. We could change it going forward for future applicants, but that's his duty is to follow that book. So as unfair as it may seem to you, it is legal. What's I, just, I just can't believe this would happen in the North Hills or in Bethel Park. I, I, I they may have a different rule book that's stricter right. than ours, but it's the same type. It's the same process. I can guarantee. You, I don't care what municipality it's in. It's the same process. You apply for the permit. Is it permitted in the zone? If so, what are the plans? Do they meet the code? Everywhere, it's the same. Now, the zoning ordinances are probably different from time to time. And the, the people originally with the plans have no obligation to be, they can change their mind. Well, he, they came back to him, he said. Yeah, they came back, I guess, so they, put, they made they an amendment it. to the thing. They did their, you know, another building permit or building application. Like I said, it's $250,000 estimated cost of construction, and the permit fee was $4,120. Is that building permit like a public document? Uh, it's probably right to another thing. So yeah. no, but the Munhall Borough residents never knew and weren't allowed to know. I get, I get 78 yeah. building permits a year. I don't. Yeah. What I do, what I do is on my inspect or on my thing, I, I say uh, <coughs> building permits issued six. A month. I mean, I don't inform people who's you know if you're if Paul's putting up a fence or Rob put up a fence. I don't tell everybody on oh, Rob Paul's put up a fence. No, I don't. Well, what's I mean, the difference then between confidentiality now and confidentiality prior to this? Because I, is it because you approve the permit? Like, what, what's the difference? Because you are not revealing it, right. and you just got done saying that you couldn't tell anybody because of confidentiality. Right. I don't understand. Right. So, so let, let me just intervene and just say, we do have options, and we do have control of the streets and we can put in place parking limitations and we can put yellow stripes on the, on the on this park and put no parking in certain areas so this may be the only thing that we can do what what our led for what our legal advice has told us is what they've done is legal but we can certainly move forward and change some of the some of the parking that's there and that's what we should really be looking at we should be looking at okay there's nothing we can do to change this, and I think there's a lot that needs to be dealt with in our zoning ordinances, period, because to let them build a building and, and consume 95% of the lot and then put, you know, leave the minimums for parking, I don't know if that, that that's all complies, but I'm sure it does. Um, but I think we have to look at what we can do to restrict and make the living space livable for the people that are living there and move forward. And I think that's our only recourse. So we just put par parking areas, uh, our parking to our parking, no parking. I would I would recommend the three spots by, by the Bash Foundation just to be you know, give it to them because they use it now on a daily basis and no one else seems to it doesn't affect anybody else. Well, if they use it, nobody else can use it. Right, but I mean, I mean so there's no one else that needs to. It. It's in front of their building. It's like, you know, people uh, courtesy in front of your, your house, you know. It's public park. Oh, right. Baseball will park <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, yeah baseball will park. Yeah. Now, baseball is a totally different, I mean, baseball, I mean. That, that's what I'm speaking to. I'm yeah. speaking to the whole neighborhood. The whole, we need to look at the whole neighborhood right. and say, okay, this neighborhood's changed now. And we need to move forward and... We need to have a consensus amongst ourselves and decide what we want to do. Because obviously, I don't think we can stop UPMC now. Um, maybe we need to change where medical facilities can go in. Because who's to say what a medical facility is? You know, you have people that are under medical use down in. Um, on Dixon Street down there, and they are laying out in the street everywhere, and there, that's a medical use? Am I correct? Not to this gentleman right here, he, he works with them. 
I don't work with him. I right. lock him up. I let he locks him up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I try to get you like to come to the podium. No, he's talking about. I wonder that. He's talking about. He talks about. Yes. Do you want me to? I sure. I love to hear about that. That's fine. Because we'd like to know how we can stop that, don't we? I've I've helped you with that. Um, my name is Fred Kinsel. I don't know if you're there or not. I live over in uh, West Hempstead, 1061 Sullivan Drive. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm here to talk about baseball. Obviously. We're not we're not talking about that yet. No, that's fine. Um, but you want to know about like steadfast ministries or yes. and house, some of those places that yes. swap houses. Um, what I did, and I've actually told him about this, I uh, presented to the state. I work for the state full board. It's my day job. But uh, I presented it to them, and I had those kind of like blackballed, if you want to say, with county probation. I spoke to Judge Joe Rango, certainly, because she likes to put a lot of guys in. The majority of the people down there are on probation, parole, uh, very drug crimes and sex offenses, as you probably know. We do. No uh, majority of them down there under Megan's law and such. But... Uh, as of right now, what I've done is uh, I got it X'd off. So you shouldn't be getting too many more. But I can't do anything about the people that are already there. So I'm trying. I've got two houses shut down, basically. But, uh, so yeah. what happens if UPMC fails there and the batch system goes under and someone else, some preacher comes in and says, you know, we're going to make this a medical rehab center here right here on main street and west street and home we're going to help a lot of people we don't have much recourse in that either do we it depends on the zoning right i don't know how you got the houses approved to begin with because i mean you're basically at the homeless shelter down there it is they're living in a dormitory style living and the, and uh, there's the not much control the, on what you got going on you the courts are sending them there yeah exactly and that's what i'm trying to stop but i can only I've only moved this borough maybe five years ago, so I think the county I'm trying. The county told us they have to live somewhere. Yeah, they do. They have to live somewhere. They just don't have to live in your borough, or they have to live you know. And if they do live somewhere like that, that's where you need to hold. Uh, I think it was about yeah. Olson, Terry, and no, Steve, the <coughs> pastor, uh, run the place. That's where they need to be held accountable. That's where they need to make sure that you know. I don't know how much insurance is going to you know pay. I don't know if that's. I don't think that's zoned for that type of living down there again, but that's they're kind of like a non profit church. They're not affiliated with UPMC by any means. No, no. They're not affiliated with anybody. Right. It's just, right. you know, these places they go in or they're pop day ministry. Uh, I want to open up a group home and they try to run a program. And it's really just a way to get guys money, give them a place to live. But you know as well as I did, the county does their inspections, the state does their inspection, the health department does their inspections every year, or whatever, two years, whatever. Hey, okay, current time on that? Yeah. All right. All right, so let's let's move on. Let's, let's, or, or, does anyone else have anything they'd like to say about the, the, the uh, batch building or, or subjects on that matter? I just would like to say a couple things. I was at the original groundbreaking over there, okay? You guys probably know Dave. When was that? 2019? And they said they'd be it in two, six to nine months. Well, we're well, well past that. And my thoughts are, the alley's closed, the mess in front, you're saying they're hoping to open by the end of summer? Well, if, now I understand they're going to work on the original building, right on the corner. Are they going to clean up all the rest of that part of Midwest Street so it appears cleaned up? It, it's a mess. My heart aches for all those people across the street who have taken care of those beautiful brick homes and then mud, ruts, everything else. When, when, can you, as the zoning person, can you go over there and say, there's a deadline? Do they ever have a deadline? It's fine. Or has this been going on for 22 years? No, they're, they're actually, it's a, it's a <coughs> Rick will get mad, but five years. Five years. The UCC record is a film permit for five years. So I mean, I can't change the state law. Okay, so but how they're been leaving early. And, and the reason why they're so far behind huh. is that COVID. 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 Pandemic. Money. And money. But those to me, this allows this kind of behavior to continue. The alleys are closed. The people don't have parking. If anybody disagrees, please tell me. Yeah. When I come down Main Street and I get over there, you know, right in the parking lot, 
my head shudders because even though that's a brand new building, that's about all it is. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks a mess. Oh, and Munhall, oh, like I said, I wanted to bring pride back to Munhall. <coughs> that's a mess. Yes. I don't know who could possibly be proud. Oh. So if Charlie and Latasha feel that's proud, I say, let's see if you build one of these in your place and let's see how fast it goes up and let's see how messy it is. And let's yes. see how streets are closed. Okay, I'm sure Bill is great. I mean, for Sometimes construction areas aren't the cleanest. <laughs> the, the mud, the the dirt, the uh, you know, just the wear or the in and out, the traffic, the the trucks coming in, truck. I mean, it's, it, they do as much as they can because um, they will get written up by the quick construction. You know, there's states up there every time looking at the road to make sure the road's okay, make sure it's clean. Believe me. The state's been down there to make sure everything, and $5.2 million, I think that building is going to be nice and clean when it opens. For inside and outside. For right now. Yeah. First you see the outside before you get to yeah. the inside. But I mean, like right now we're down there, you know, laying, or doing the, the uh, sidewalks. Concrete's messy. Well, the water, the weather. You, the weather, when it starts raining in January and February, that don't help either. The water, the, the ground's wet. So, but I believe me, five point two million dollars. I'm sure they'll have it nice and clean by the time they're ready to open. Okay. Anyone else? I have one last question. Who we from that? Medical marijuana. Are they going to be allowed to dispense it out of there? I don't know. Yeah, that's state. They, they have small state sponsoring. On that. Is, is it is that's it under our zoning code? Will they be allowed to do that? There? Do we have anything in our zone? We probably don't have anything in our zone. No, that's regulated by the state. Yeah, so they preempted the field. We're not allowed to regulate medical marijuana. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the state laws or what control we're regulating. So if the state regulates something, they take over the regulation. Okay, so that's one thing that they can't put in, just put in there now because they have doctor's offices. Well, they would have to follow state law. The state law says you have to be, you know, have to make these calls for. It's going to be legal. It might be able to. I don't, I don't know the state law on that. Whatever the state law permits, and they can't open something from that office. To, to the public, but if it's dispensed through a doctor's office, uh, possibly. Uh, just looking at what else is possible. Okay, let's move on. All right, uh, let's move on. Fred, Fred Kinzel, please uh, take a stand. Um, I know you want to talk about youth baseball, yeah. Steel Valley baseball. Yes, sir. And I let, I'll let just let you know we are Trotman Field. We were there. We're, we're going to be redoing the playground down there. Um, in the next year, year and a half, we have pro we have programs set up for that. Um, in the past, the best bathroom re uh, restroom upgrades were always done by the by the the ballparks the, the ball people down there, baseball field really? Trotman. Okay. Um, the boroughs always helped. We needed help there. Um, the video camera. I'm not sure. Did we did we do video cameras down there? Were they ours? They're always they're always the ball ballparks. Okay. okay. So go ahead. So basically, you just answered a lot of that. You said that the uh, playground is not scheduled to be repaired for the next year and a half. Well, no, we're looking at it. We're plan making plans for it. We have a grant to redo the, the playground over there. Right. We're in the process of doing that. Whether it gets started this spring and summer, but we have to up to two years to finish it. So we are in the process of doing that right now. All right. Because that's yeah, correct. There's a uh, four-year grant. I think it was two hundred thousand dollar. It's, it's, a match grant. it's a matching grant. Yes. So, right. um, and I think right as of now, we're nowhere near. Mine hasn't contributed anything to that, right? Well, we haven't started yet. Okay. So then you were supposed to send down somebody to assess the playground. We were there. The council was there. Okay. With our engineer, we how assessed. Much? We assessed the the playground area and looked at the whole playground. Area. All right. And, and we have. Our, our engineer working on that project right now. I, yeah, I can give a little okay. update on it. If, if Certainly. Yeah. So, there'll be one last thing I have to talk about right. when I do my report. So, <laughs> we, uh, several members of council and public, myself, went to Vine Street and Troutman, where the efforts for, for this grant are going to be focused. Uh, the borough was awarded $221,000, and they have to match that in kind with either additional additional money mm -hmm. or labor. So the total project amount is going to be $442,000. It will be split between Vine Street and Troutman. 
So right now we're putting preliminary layouts together for each. In the packets, I have one for Vine Street. I did not finish Troutman's because we were working on another grant application that was due today. Uh, but Troutman will be ready soon after. Once we get layouts for each one kind of approved and agreed upon, those will go to the state, they'll get reviewed, they'll give them a thumbs up. Once the state says they're okay, we'll start preparing cons construction contract documents, we'll put those portions out to bid, and they'll get done. So it's everything's underway. The, we have the full backing of council, and we're, we're currently working on it right now. All right, so, but it won't be done this summer or spring. Likely, likely not. I mean, just where we're at in the process, I mean, it's at least going to take a couple months to get to the place where we're bidding it out, bid stuff out, takes a while to get bonds, award, maybe best case scenario, I would say, like, you know, some, someone might start working in the fall, maybe, you know, early, early spring next year. So probably yeah, not, probably not going to be this year, but it's a process, mm -hmm. and I can assure you that, uh, you know, I have the full full support of this council. They're engaged, and uh, they they want they want me working on it. We're moving it along. And and just let me speak to that. I, I don't think council has a problem with us going there, and sending our our, our our crew there, and putting some mulch down, making it making it a little bit nicer for the, this year. I don't think it would be much much on us to do something like that. Spruce it up a little bit. Make sure we have garbage cans down there because I think we need garbage cans down there big time. Yeah. Um, I know that Trotton has really made a big improvement with the fencing and a lot of stuff has been done down there and it's looking awesome and we're happy to make a, a, a venture down there as well. And in the uh, concession stands, the restrooms and so forth, how does that work out? Are you guys willing to, um, like you're talking about a water heater and stuff like that, does that money come from you guys or is that... Uh... I'm not sure in the past, I believe that um, when I used to do a lot of work down there, I would volunteer and I would I would donate fixtures and, and stuff down there. I don't know who's involved down there now. Um, and I don't know that the borough ever really paid for water heaters and stuff down there, did we, Bob? I think it was. I mean, it's we a borough park, correct? It is a borough park. Okay. Because I was just curious. And, and we're certainly here. Please, okay. you know, if they need a water heater. I believe they do. They need a water heater and there's something with bathrooms and kind of... Uh, Getting run down pretty bad. Their own wooden. Yeah, they have the dividers in there, kind of, they're wooden dividers, and they're kind of falling down. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was going to go out and buy my own paint, paint it out myself, and, you know, I could do a little bit of that. But uh, I didn't know where where the line ends that, uh, you know, I need to request funds from the borough to maybe help me out, or, uh, you know, if I decide to do it all myself along with the other members of the board, you know what I mean? That's where I'm kind of stuck at. Sure, Bill. Okay, um, Bill Hanna. I used to be the president of Mount Hall West Hempstead Baseball about 20 years ago. Okay. What we used to fund before the lights were redone, we had a fish fry, a fundraiser right there. We raised the funds. Along the way, the borough was very supportive. Mayor Bonner, Public Works, right there, to assist us uh, with a lot of things. But the, the reality was the borough pays the utilities, the lighting, and the water itself. We had fundraisers that we did that you know paid for the lights down there. There was an older set of lights that were in disrepair. We had repaired. And the concession stand electrical need fixed and actually the bathrooms need fixed. And actually Rick helped me at the time right there to replace some of the fixtures mm -hmm. itself. So we did a lot of the fundraising ourselves. We bought uh, you know the field we used to you know Pay for the you know, new dirt, clay, mm -hmm. the whole deal yeah. Yeah, that we, we did before. So uh, I, I guess my question that, that I have, I mean, I think we're willing to help, but at the same time, what what is uh, Steel Valley Baseball doing from the standpoint of fundraising and, and things like that? And before we go any further, I just want to interject okay. on something that let council know. When you and I were there, Bill, we had 400 kids down there. Right. Yeah. Today they are struggling. Yeah. It's a different association now than it was 25 years ago when our kids were down there. So I keep here. 
Um, so, and I empathize with that. Just so I want everyone to know, they are struggling down there. How many kids are in the in the league down in Trotman Field right now? Right now, uh, we're about 139. Ooh, so they are struggling. That's, uh, the girls are doing much better than the than the boys down there right now. So I I certainly feel if we can help them, we certainly should. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I wanted no, I, I wanted to let Bill know that. I yeah, I mean, we've increased that. 40, roughly 45 kids from last year. So we're getting. There. You know, I mean, we're kind of building, we're trying. Good. But, uh, you know, I've only been involved with it for the past three or four years. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to help out and I'm just seeing how things are. I know they got that grant from the Campbell Association or whatever that is, the foundation. They came in, did a great job. Some things needed to be, whatever. But, uh, I mean, mostly it's a concession stand and the playground. You know, just well, some playground. You know, the rest is going to be attended to. I'll be so, the the, play, the yeah, playground is going to be dealt with. Fine. I, I, I can certainly come down there and look at the bathrooms with you. I'm certainly more than welcome to help mm -hmm. come down there and look at it with you. Partitions. That's another. That's another question we can look at. Yeah, the bathrooms. Yeah, just some of the different. Uh, right. Yeah. I get it. So. So, so please contact me, and I'll be glad to come down and look at things with you. So if we get a. I get a bill, an itemized bill, maybe some things we need to repair. I can bring this back next month. Or Absolutely. I I suggest I Absolutely. We'll meet with you down there. We'll go over things again, and we'll move forward. All right. I'd just all. like to state that when we were down there, over by the playground area, mm -hmm. okay, closer towards the doghouse, there's a lot of trees that need taken down badly. Mm -hmm. We mentioned about that, too. I mean, mm -hmm. there needs to be some up there. I think we need to be 50%. A tree is what did it all. Tree, it? That one tree is what did it all. In. <coughs> yeah. You know, if we had yeah, probably identified that a couple years ago, we probably wouldn't have this conversation right now. We'd be trying to, you know, improve that area <coughs> with what we had, you know, so it would be great. Hey, I'm sorry. And, uh, yeah, just a uh, couple things. You know, there, there is problems down there with vandalism. We, we know that. And you, you didn't bring that up. So I, I, mean, I, I do feel there is a need for cameras down there. And from my talks with a couple of people from baseball, I think you and I even talked about it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're willing to buy the cameras, right? Yes. But yes. you need a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, and we would pay for the Wi-Fi as well. I think they're more or less just uh, asking if you'll give them permission to put the cameras up. I have a solution. You know, that kind of thing. Like the, you know, go back to apply for a zoning ordinance or a permit. I have a for the Wi-Fi connection. Rob's porch is right about there. <laughs> <laughs> you can just tap right in. Right. You can tap right in. I don't ring the doorbell, but it doesn't take it off. I don't ring the doorbell, it doesn't go far enough. I don't think it's a password. The monitor there. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're here to help. We want, we want that place to succeed. And I'm personally willing to come down there and work with you. Dave's willing to come down and work with you. So please get my number after the meeting and, and we'll go from there. We got a little bit more help. I'm oh, sorry. We got a little more help. We started the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council. I saw that. Yeah. We are we're, when we want to come down and help on a cleanup day. That'd be great. Uh, I was going to schedule with you or yeah. schedule a with DJ. Or a weekend? Day. Well, probably, what do you think works best? This is When's your opening day? day? We're looking at May 7th right now. That's Saturday. About a week before maybe? That's Saturday, Friday or the Friday you can before, do it in the evening the or whatever. Get the light yeah, yeah, on. Um, <laughs> um, the week before would honestly be great. If you guys could open the uh, concession stand and stuff, I think that would be like if you make it a whole community night. I definitely know there's a lot of people in the community that would be willing to come and help you. Oh, and great. if you open the concession stand, I, I think. Brushes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was, I, yeah. I know everyone would be willing to come down and help, and if you open the concession stand, I think that'd be also a really good source of income. And I would we, we mention, we, we'll put it on our website, and we'll promote it, and we'll work we'll work together with you guys. Like we could even get a food truck down there. Oh, yeah. One big work, I mean, we can get hold of a food truck to be down there, too. Or well, I think we've got to ice that you guys let our concession stand make the most. For a concession, yeah. No, no, we'll probably yeah. figure out something. They take Chicken we'll tenders and fries. For we'll figure something right. out. Yeah. yeah. And that <coughs> condo is great on the grill when he makes great oh. on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be oh. awesome with that. We have a girl there. I just dug it out last year. Good. Did you have a question, sir? You asked about fundraising. Yeah, I was just yeah. wondering. <laughs> yeah. I was just interested in what you were doing for fundraising. Uh, we just recently had a hoodie sale. 
uh, generated uh, enough to buy all our kids in the league an additional uh, jersey. So now the kids will have, uh, it's a practice jersey, but it's a uh, dry, quick dry material or whatnot. So we're giving that back so the kids have two shirts. Nice. And then uh, we did, uh, um, so our Apple tickets along with our registration. So you're cash positive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You know, yep. all the non-profit uh, yeah, requirements are all in place. Yeah, they are. All right, welcome to come back. I've been here since 2004. All right, okay. that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Fred, thank, thank, you for time. thank you for coming. You're welcome. And thanks for hearing me out. Stick around. Uh, Mott, if you want to give your number to Becky, I'll have it. I can, I can call for you if you have to leave. All right. All right. You're going to go much longer for the... Uh, we have, we have oh, to yeah. get through the rest of it. We won't, hear, we won't be here much longer. All right. I'll wait. Thank thanks. You. Thank All you. Thank you. Right. Okay, so um, let's move on to um, uh, reports from the mayor. Oh, okay, reports from the mayor. We've been here a while, so we'll try to make it as yeah. short as possible. No, it's been a good meeting. Uh, it's been, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been a good productive meeting. Yep. Uh, one thing that we're looking to do, and uh, I talked to you, Mayor, I mean, Rick, I thought he wanted this uh, meeting with the Civil Service Commission so we can start testing up. And uh, I reached out to them and I knew <coughs> with your okay. Yep. And we scheduled an executive session before our workshop next month. Right. Maybe trail with an eminent week and we can move forward, hopefully, and take a vote to start up a little civil service testing so we can uh, you know, look for our, keep our force up because. Uh, I mean, it's getting bad out there. You know, I mean, I mean, it's you know, even my my whole week hasn't been hurt hurt as much, but we've heard at home. So every morning you wake up and you hear something on the news. So we're going to have to keep our force going. Absolutely, we have a great police force. Anything else, Mayor? No, that'll be it. Great, great. Oh, can you can, can, can Bree give a little presentation? Up Bree, do you have anything you'd like to say? We, we're glad you're here. Yes, I'll read my little thing. My laptop does. Please, please, uh, uh, you can stand up if you like. Or you don't have to. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm a student liaison for the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council, and we had our interest meeting at Steel Valley High School this past Thursday, March 10th, for, with Mayor Burwell of Homestead and any interested students who can make it. We had a range of students in attendance. Well, um, yes, Mayor Falls was there. We had a range of students in attendance. We had everyone from eighth graders to seniors there, so it's not really like just an upperclassman thing or just an eighth grader thing. It's everyone. There's kids from everywhere in the high school, so I think that's really great. Um, everyone that I've talked to since then has been really excited to get started with it. Uh, the next meeting date and location is to be determined, but both it will be on the, both the Mun Hall and the Homestead Facebook pages when it's decided on. So that's all I have. Thank yeah, we're you. We're reaching out to West Homestead still, too. Yes, that is Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> Mayor Jim Dack is... Is, I don't know. I don't know how well he's doing right now. Have you talked to him at all? I called down there. I haven't talked to him though. Okay. He hasn't returned my call yet. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find him. Right. Right. Someone mm -hmm. called him to be a councilman or someone. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, solicitor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last week, uh, I completed uh, my review and provided uh, the required legal opinion for the ongoing redevelopment assistance capital program, one million dollar grant application process that we're going through so that, that is, continues to move forward and the other as I look through my stack of, of current materials all seven other items involve litigation which of course I can't discuss here but I have reported through email communications through Becky and ask her for those to counsel so that's all I really need to speak about tonight thank, thank you. you Mr. Solicitor uh, Borough Manager Administration Becky can you keep it brief I do not have a report for you. You will have a report tomorrow. I, I'll just let you all know, Becky has been very busy, overwhelmed, I might add. Uh, we've been interviewing for a new borough manager, manager position. We've also interviewed for um, uh, secretarial help or administrative assistant in the borough office. Um, so we've been very busy. Things are slowly getting better. Our borough engineer? Thank you. I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, just wanted to give you guys an update on a couple things. One, um, the statewide LSA application was submitted yesterday. Uh, the final amount of that application was $924,000. 
$924,090. Um, that was for streetscaping along Main Street. Uh, the third page of my packet, I included uh, a picture of a completed project that we did in um, Somerville, Massachusetts, that shows some of the, the streetscape concepts I tried to incorporate in that estimate. It also included all new um, curb ramps at all the intersections, removal of the brick pavers, and uh, uh, putting in new ADA compliant curb ramps. So I missed your first portion. Did you say you completed the application? The application is submitted. It's in. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Well, yeah, see. Uh, it wasn't just me. Becky helped and also Commonwealth Consulting Partners. So, so it, would they approve the whole thing, deny the whole thing? Could they approve portions of it? So I will tell you what I know, there's $144 million available statewide. So I don't think you're going <coughs> to award $144 million projects. That'll probably, there's a good chance we might get part of what we asked for. But the nice thing about our project is we can easily scale it down because we broke everything down from block to block. So and, and how far did you go with that? The I mean, whole way. Went from, you went the whole way. From uh, Miller all the way up to Park School. <coughs> that was one thing that we were questioning about. And, and in, your, in your, your bid, did you consider taking out all the concrete sidewalk? Or Not all the... Just, so just the bricks? Just the bricks at the intersection mm -hmm. and then the narrow brick along the parkway. Mm -hmm. And then I thought we would enhance that kind of like what you see in that picture there, mm -hmm. our Massachusetts project planning. It could be used as stormwater retention. Um, you can widen out sidewalks and areas so vendors could do street sales, you know, if you wanted to do away with mm -hmm. stuff like this. You can put money in there for new tree boxes. Um, Interesting. Uh, benches. Bike ramps or uh, bike racks, different. Oh, different I hope features. we get. It. Yeah, I hope we get. It. And like I said, that there's a chance that if we are successful, it might be a partial amount, and we can go back and sharpen our pencils and figure out where it's gonna. What are the most highly traveled areas? What where would you get the most bang for your buck? Awesome. So that that had to be put in by a certain day. It had to go in by yesterday or. Today. 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 We got it submitted yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Anything else? Uh, one other thing. Two, uh, two other quick things, I promise. So I screwed up. I went to a bid opening um, February 27th. It was for the Community Development Block Grant. My payment recommendation, um, it, or excuse me, bid award recommendation is attached to the back of the letter along with the bid tabs. I forgot to tell Becky get her this information and uh, so she can get it on the agenda. I recommend um, at, at your discretion, you consider um, a motion to authorize the Steel Rivers COG to move forward for this project. It's completely funded by the county. It will, it will cost Mud Hall $0. Okay, can you, can you wait on this and maybe we can add that? We'll amend, amend this. this. Right, we'll amend this as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so give us, give us, we'll be amending some things here. Sure. Becky has the 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 verbiage. Okay. And just one other quick thing, I wanted to introduce Courtney Dum. Um, she's going to be filling in for me in some meetings in the future. She looks very nice, but she's she's fierce. So <laughs> <laughs> watch out with her. And uh, yeah, just wanted to introduce her. And, and I have a quick question for you. Yep. I know that we received a um, a tentative permit to go into the, WEC, the the new building yes what was it what would it be called it would be what temporary would be temporary occupancy. occupancy I'm sorry so much going on <coughs> um, did we get a final walkthrough with with uh, the contractor we'll, we'll be doing that within the next week or two please let us know because I know some people on council want to go through that final walkthrough and we're curious as to you know what's going to be done and when, oh. when we're going to be done a lot of the issues that we saw last time we went through there, such as the ceiling tiles, it's been addressed. So it's, it's, it's looking good. And, and one major progress. concern I have is water coming down through into the tech, into that technical building, into that technical room, yeah. or IT room we'll call it. Um, yeah. That's an issue, and I don't know where that water was coming from, and I know you guys look for it from what I'm hearing. I think, I talked about it briefly at the work, but just so you're aware, um, 
There's, after PA American did their upgrades out here, uh, Casey from Turtle Creek Valley called me. They wreaked havoc. They don't have the pressure regulators and stuff on this old building here. They broke several water lines at the hospital, and uh, including the old service that used to go to the building. So there's potential that groundwater infiltrated into those old conduits and got in. I mean, it hasn't. Was never an issue in the last, you know. It was pouring down rain though that night when it came in there. It, we thought it was a rain event, to be honest with you. Yeah, it got in some through some abandoned conduits. They haven't plugged up now. And it hasn't been an issue okay. since. So, okay. So okay. we're still waiting for our, our, our permanent occupancy permit. And what's the hold up on that? I think uh, Dave wants to see the site work complete that we got the multimodal grant for. Oh, yeah, the outside parking has to be. Oh, yeah, all the outside has to be done. So we're waiting Parking. for that. That's what, there's nothing on the inside or the building. The inside's 100% good. Okay, that's what I want to know. All right. Is that it then? That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. One other thing. I included some concept layouts for Vine Street in your packets too. If I you, saw that. If you guys have any comments, uh, number one was kind of <laughs> my preferred option along with, I uh, just wanted to include like some, a multi-purpose sports court towards the... And did you look at Bocce? Was there, I, was there any difference in Bocce and the other? No, I, I, I was, I mean, the, the courts are longer for Bocce, but in terms of what goes in those boxes, I mean, it's the same river rocks with lime granite dust. Uh -huh. I think what, I was surprised how big those Bocce courts are. Are they? Yeah, I mean, you can see them in the picture. I want to play Bocce. Two scales. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> yeah. I apologize, I went too long, but if you have any feedback for me on those alternate subs, uh, please let me know. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Paul. All right. Uh, Borough uh, Public Works Chair. We all I have is a list of streets we're going to try to pay this year. Um, we're trying to be Park Square, Harvey Street Extension, Park of Shady. John Street, Port of Perry, Hilltop, Franklin, <coughs> uh, part of Main Street, River View, Mercer, a couple of alleys, Scott Way and uh, Ridge Way. Yeah. Yeah. Pictures that Council wants to see them. Hey, Bob. There's, there's another bad alley uh, in back of uh, Gray Street. That one is terrible. Yeah. Anyway, we can do anything on that one. I mean, that's one of the, the complaints that I get when I walk through the neighborhood is the Gray Street one. That and behind Main Street, behind the, the uh, floral. Yeah. There, that alley's right, 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 right. Right. That is awesome. Cool. That, that alley's cool. Is that Jacob's that way? And, and are we getting yeah. summer help this summer? Jacob's. Are we going to look into summer help? Jacob's. Yeah. yeah. Jacob's. Summer help. <laughs> can you use summer help? And oh, Bob, I want to compliment you too. I got a one. I called you today. I got a, and I think I guess it was pretty easy because it's already fixed. That guy told me he complained about the memorial on Main Street, the fly. Yeah, and you fixed it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I was aware that he fixed it as well because I already heard that they called the mayor and it got done. Yeah, <laughs> I was on it. I was there's jealous a, of you, Rob. <laughs> so uh, there's lots of alleys down uh, north and out of town. They're real, real bad shape. I don't know if he's uh, going to that move bridge. down that way or do anything down there. I usually when we do the paving projects, I look to I, I look I look to Bob for for direction in terms of what what needs attention the the what's in the worst shape. So I think next next oh, month bad. I think next month we should talk about this again a little more in depth. Okay. Because I, I agree, I think the alleys need to be attended to, and there's a lot of them that need to be attended to. And that's why I asked you, do we need any, can we use any uh, summer help? Because I think if we had summer help, and, and I don't know if we can do this or not, we'll talk about it. Can we use summer help? And we have, we have our own paving equipment. We just need something that would, you know, take up the old binding and put, the, put it down. I think we could do a lot of that on our own, in our own in-house work, and I need to talk to you about that. Yeah, there's one up in the garden. That's that's something we'll talk about, okay? We certainly <coughs> wanted the garden. Yeah, Marigold. Marigold. All right, Marigold. let's move on. Uh, thank you, Bob. Um, please, Chief. Uh -huh.
and the president. Um, we answered 549 calls for the money. We arrested 32 people, 16 adults, and 16 juveniles. Uh, all our officers have completed the mandatory police updates through the state police. Uh, we have two vehicles. We have plate readers that have been down for two months. Um, they should be up and running tomorrow. And I also received quotes for uh, vehicles for the grant, for the grant writer to both, and she's going to be contacting council concerning that grant. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Sounds like you were busy. Mm -hmm. Fire Chief? Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we were, we've been busy since the first of the year, that's for sure. Um, uh, more than once. Um, I turned in uh, January's report, um, February's report, um, my MVP died halfway through, so you'll get that attached to the next one. Um, we did have 50 calls in January, um, and I don't have no command power on there, but I'll add it. Um, I passed out the uh, 2021 annual report to you. Um, you have that. If there's any questions, you must be how to get a hold of me. Um, and just I want to highlight a couple things on that that I think are interesting. We had 483 calls last year for requests for emergency response, which is a lot. Um, and I wanted to know there's a there's a section on there where I break down where the calls are basically in town. And I wanted I just want to note that the pie chart that's there, that's for 21. Um, and I forgot to take the to the right of it, you see the four-year comparison. I forgot to add that over there. So the numbers when I, I glanced at it, they're about the same when you see that. So it would be a five-year comparison as to where the emergency responses have been historically um, located in my home. So <clears throat> um, we're manpower, uh, manpower, total man hours we put in last year were about uh, a little better than 15,000 man hours um, at no cost to the taxpayers, of course. Um, but um, there's a lot of things that are factored in there. When I do the man hours for the report, it's time of dispatch to time back in service. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about when all the man hours aren't there, when we have a fire, um, it takes us maybe two to three hours just to get the vehicles and the hose and everything back in service. Um, so I figure every call we have at least 25 to a half hour getting back in service. If it's a major call, we might be there for multiple hours. That's not factored in the man hours. I only want you to know that back your head, that's all. Is Brian Gardner in there in the office? Is he still in there? He's been on? Okay. I, just, I wanted to mention that uh, this year we had a change in some of our battalions. <coughs> Dave Smoley, um, stepped out as the battalion chief of number five. He did it for many years. And I wanted to mention Brian was here. Brian has retired as a battalion chief. He served 20 years as a chief officer in the bar and I want to thank him, but he, he snuck out. Get him here next meeting. So, I will. Get him here next meeting. Does uh, anybody have any questions for the, uh, for the fire department? Awesome. I, I think your report's very well done. I haven't had a chance to really look at it. But Don't pay attention to the spelling mistake. As usual, I, you know, I, I just look at the lines, the little lines. <clears throat> mutual aid, PD assisted. Is that police assisted mutual aid? Now, PD would be any time to be a police call assigned for somebody to help with. I try to categorize everything, but there's others that I, like cat and tree, I'm not putting out on my report, cat and tree, stuff like that. And PD assist, it's it's a rarity that they call us for something that they would actually, that I couldn't categorize, but it does happen several times a year. Thank you, Chief. Like code enforcement? Uh, yeah, you have a copy of my report. I'll briefly read it to you. February March is a slow month for me. Uh, phone calls received 232 phone calls, 8,123. Building permits issued 6, occupancy inspections 35, door hangers 2, code enforcement letters sent out, 1 for unsafe structure, 1 for exterior walls, 5 for dumpster permits, 2 for accumulation of garbage. Legal letters sent out 29, meetings attended 6, court hearings 2, reports that I had to issue were 8, and other matters I dealt with were around 8. Um, I roll, I've looked at the agenda, and I know last Tuesday the um, Planning Commission met the same time we did, and they approved the, I talked to Mike, and they said they approved the Plate Mill Site Subdivision, but I don't see it on the agenda. I don't either. I, I, with no added cost, it, it doesn't add up. It's no added cost, so I'd like to put a motion 
if council approves, I, and I'd read the most like motion to approve the subdivision plan of the Plate Mill site located at 881 East Waterfront Drive, lot block 179A-001, as recommended by the Planning Commission. What did they approve? Subdivision. The Plate Mill site down there. I think they have, uh, Mike said they approved the, uh, I, I, they've been going through in front of planning for the last. Oh, yeah. Uh, at four. least the last. Four months, five months, something so like that. So they're separating the, the one lot from the other? Is that what, is that what, is that, what that was? I don't, I, I believe that's what it is. They did separate it from, from um, Bristol Metals. Bristol Metals. Um, and I think that the, the controversy with that and why it took so long is because the, the bike lane people wanted to actually extend the bike lane from behind the apartment buildings along the river to go behind the, the plate mill and then behind Bristol Meadows, but but there was a, a a little bit of problem because the people now who are going to build this warehouse warehouse or whatever, they're actually going to dig down four feet. So the the bike lane that that, that they wanted to run through there won't happen because they're going to actually dig down for their parking lot and stuff like that. Plus, it would have only went behind this subdivision and not behind Bristol Meadows because Bristol Meadows is, from what I understand, storing hazardous material behind there. So, you know, I, I mean, you can't hold up a multi-million dollar organization because of a bike lane. So, I'm, no, I, agree I, I hope everybody's in agreement with that. But if we really want to vote on something we don't know what we're voting on. I know what we're voting on. I, you know, I do because I've been to the meetings. I'm not sure. Did did, did Borough get a letter from the Planning Commission? I remember seeing something through my email. I, I just wanted like I wanted like to hold just up. a simple subdivision. It's a, oh, pretty well. Yeah, I'd say it was simple subdivision. I mean, I'm sorry to say it that way, but I, I, because I'm on the Planning Commission, I know what. I mean, you know, what's is, been discussed over there, but this also. isn't moving dirt or final site plans. It's just a moving uh, parcel. Personal line. Yeah, pretty much. But the Planning Commission held a meeting last Tuesday and voted to recommend the plate mill site layout for council approval in March. And, I, and I'm reading this, um, and that's all that's sent. There's no drawings or nothing else to show. So. Okay. Typically, the engineer takes a look at that. Did you see that, Colin? I have not. I, if they revise something, <laughs> something. <laughs> well, no. No, it was original. It just. We, we reviewed the site plan it did, it did, yeah, six months ago, six months ago, months ago yeah. seven months ago, okay. and there was some housekeeping issues. Right. That Courtney probably reviewed it. Okay. okay. I mean, I would maybe then put on there with the approval of the engineer. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll take I'll take a look at it. I I did not before the mm -hmm. approval. Is there is there the difference if we table it now and look at it? Is there a problem? Is there, is there a problem with that? Uh, they've been going six they, months. They've been going a long time they, with they, this. Yeah, um, because once or twice we didn't have a quorum. Right. Once or twice they didn't bring a, a sign agreement between right. Crystal Metals and they, like I said, like last week Tuesday they had their and Kevin and I were in here. We couldn't be in two places at one time, right. so we don't know. I can't think what happened last meeting. No. But this has been an ongoing thing where one meeting we didn't have a quorum. The next meeting the guy didn't have the paperwork. Right? <clears throat> next meeting some, and, something else happened. And this meeting we don't have the paperwork either. And this meeting we don't have the paperwork either. I say I say I think we should put it off for next month myself. I, I would feel I would not feel comfortable on looking at it. But that's council's vote. Can we do should we do like a roll call vote on that? Table solicitor. Well, someone's going to have to make a motion to amend the agenda to add it. So, if someone wants to add it, we'll start with that. If we don't get that motion, then it's automatically going to be deferred until next one. Does that interfere with anything? Uh, otherwise, uh, that's what I asked. It just puts them. It puts them a month behind. I mean, they're we're eager to go. I would say. I assume. Great. What, typically, when you submit an application, count the borough has so long. To act on that. Yeah. And that's in our ordinance again. Do you know how many days? I mean, I don't think we're, we're above beyond that. But we're beyond 
Yeah, but there were there were there was consented to postponements until the meeting last week. It doesn't come to us until the planning commission completes its review and makes a recommendation. Like Kevin and I said they had, did have quorums at least once. I'm just saying for council, we just this this just happened seven days. Ago. Right. Yeah. So yeah. But I mean, it took planning probably over the time of the day. Can we just take the word on it on the engineer, you and Kevin? I certainly it's have a, a, it's I certainly easy. have a problem with it. I, I I think we need to see what they're going to do, and and what we're going to vote on. Because honestly, I'm not I'm not feeling comfortable about it right now. I'd like to see what it is, and that's my own opinion. I mean, they'll they'll I mean, they drawings and just. I like to see the drawings. I like to see what they're talking about. So are we tabling it? There's I nothing think, to table because there's no oh, because motion. there's no motion. Okay. Yeah. If one of you wants to make a motion and bring it to a vote, you certainly can, and we can amend it. We can amend it. So, um, if there's any doubt that anybody has a, a a problem and or issue with this, that's fine, and we'll just do it and we'll vote on it next month. Okay. So we're not at that point. Think about it, what you want to do, and then because after we go through this, we're going to amend, and then we're going to make votes. So where are we at here? Who was I just speaking with? Where are we at here? Dave? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. I'm done. Right, no. Any questions for me? Finance Chair? Thank you, Dave. I will gladly tell you that right now we have $826,701.12. That's a total key balances for all the accounts which we deal with Brentwood Bank. I just want to say that for your knowledge we do have four of us on council who are signers for the checks. Two of us are mandated out of the four to be there every week. So two of us appear every Tuesday and sign checks. I will tell you that today we signed 63 checks. There's a lot of checks due. You can light, people's gas, you know, the, the Pennsylvania Water Authority. We are learning a lot of these different names like Quill Corporation. I'm like, what's Quill? And they got to Becky, you know, supplies, paper supplies and things like that. The other ones are coming to us naturally. But if you ever want to ask questions, please feel free. We're doing the very best we can. I did ask Donna McCurry today, when do we get money in? And she said, after she starts collecting taxes, April 1st, they haven't even gone out. So we will not get the majority of money right now until the taxes are paid by the people. We do get money from legal tax for all of us who paid the $220 for the year of sewage. <coughs> so we have gotten some money back from that. Uh, we're getting there. We're trying. Thank you. Thank you, Rand. All right, Sewer Authority? Anyone like to speak? <laughs> I submitted my report to you guys last week. Um, it was our minutes from our January meeting and my February report. Okay. If anybody has any questions? No questions? Thank you. Thank you. Tax collector? She is not going to be here this Okay. All right. So uh, at this time, we'd like to make a couple amendments. And um, Bill, you have one to start with. Yes, uh, a motion to amend the agenda to add a motion to hire a part-time administrator. I second that motion. Second. Okay. We're do a roll. We're gonna do a roll call up. Oh, we do. No, no, we're just amending. We're amending. Oh, we're amending. We're amending. Sorry, later. Right. Sorry. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? No nays? Passes unanimously. Unanimously. All right, so let's let's make a motion. Do I have a motion to, um, do, you have, do you have her name? Oh, 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 sorry. You don't mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
We're gonna we're, we're just amending the agenda. Then we're gonna let the public comment on the agenda. Oh, that's right. That's correct. And then we'll make that vote. But there's also Colin had requested a motion to amend the agenda to add a motion to approve. I was gonna do the one at the time. Oh. I was gonna do this one and vote on that and then amend it again. Oh, but so I, I just want to make sure the public gets to speak on these. Well, let's do it both. Uh, you're correct. Let's just do this both at the same time. Yeah, because all of the amendments, right. the public speak. You're correct. You're correct. So go ahead, Dave. Uh, Greg. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Colin, you it was it the catch basin? Yeah. Becky has kind of, you want to read it off, Becky? Yeah. Well, well, I don't need the motion, though. This is simply, I, I'm, we need, and someone needs to make a motion to amend the agenda to add a motion to approve the catch basin replacement award. What, so the Steel Rivers COG is going to administer the contract. So I would propose a, a motion uh, to allow Steel Rivers COG to award the, the catch basin repair project to John D. Caruso. And again, that's fine, thank you, but we're just oh, amending to make it general now. Just a motion to right. amend the agenda to allow a motion to award the catch basin replacement. That's the first part. I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Okay, there are any other motions to amend the agenda before we finish this part of the meeting? So do we want to amend this portion with the, uh, with the, with the, with the, no, no, with the um, property to waterfront. The no, they don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Okay, all right, so that's going to pass. So, all right, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that next month. And I hate to say that, but we need to, we need to see it. it needs to come to us in, in proper form. Um, so the next thing we would go now, we, would, we have those three, we have three modes. Four motions to pay the bills one us. So we'll call it motion one. The first one. Motion. Public comments. Yeah, yeah. Okay, do we have any public comments on on these um, new uh, items of consideration? I just want. To, or any item. Yeah, just that if you're making a motion to hire someone, you have to give the 24 hour notice because your truck, your trucker is going to cost the borrowed money. Yeah, well, that's why. I have made the ruling. You can make. There's an exception. You make a motion to amend the agenda, and then Becky, this has to be posted that we amend the agenda within 24 hours of the meeting, so the public that's not here can see what was done. Okay. So there's actually a posting after the meeting that satisfies the requirement. This was one of the things we discussed in yeah, executive mean, session. We, we certainly don't want to have any right. any problems with uh, the state, and and we're certainly trying to be very transparent. And just to let you know that this one, this this motion here for the catch basin, did you say is totally funded through the? It, it's going to cost Mud Hall zero dollars. Right. So that that's certainly it's, a, it's totally covered through the grant. Right. So that's awesome. So any questions else from the public? Okay. All right, so let's go with our first motion. Um, is that where we're at now? Yeah. So we can go, with, let's go with the first motion. Uh, Bill, let's go with our first motion to hire. Um, we need her name then, correct? Yeah, name and uh, pay rate. Right. Okay, motion to hire Joy Jacobs mm -hmm. uh, to the role of administrative assistant at fifteen dollars an hour. Correct. All in favor? We need a second. Oh, we need a second. second. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any questions on the motion? Go ahead. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? All unanimous. Okay, second motion is for the cash basin. Um, I need a motion to approve. Um, well, maybe call it could be. Yeah, yeah. Becky, yeah. Becky, yeah. 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 Yeah.
motion to allow Steel Rivers Cog to provide off. Uh, provide authorization to John D. Caruso to start catch basin project CDBGFY47 in the amount of $33,850, noting that this contract is fully funded through Allegheny County Community Development Block Grant. You have a motion? Motion. You need a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 No. No, any opposed? No. No. Passes unanimously. All right, motion to appoint either Dave Youngkins or Joe Ballas to the SOAR authority by roll call vote. I need a I need a vote, I guess. Or, Pardon me? Who's abstaining? Do we do we make a motion for no, you can't vote for each individual or what do we do for one who you want one or the other? Oh, well, you doing a roll call vote? Oh, we have a question on the motion. Sure. sure. Uh, is Joe Ballas want want the appointment back? He did. Uh, well, why aren't we giving it to him? Maybe one that he's already been on. Because council feels that we'd like to have a person on the sewer authority that would be there and be a representation from council and. That's why we want that. So uh, Dave Youngkins is going to get it? Well, we haven't gone to that point yet. Well, it's obvious that you're, you're pointing toward him if you just said Joe Ballas. Uh, it's a roll call vote. We haven't voted on it yet. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. Okay. Becky, would you call the roll call vote? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. You can have a second feeling. So, uh, so we can roll call. You're going to either. Yes. You did have a second. Yes. All right. Okay. So when I call your name, you're going to either say Joe Ballas or um, Dave Youngkins. Okay. Councilwoman Fry. Dave Youngkins. Councilman Stein. Councilman voted in. Joe Ballas. Councilman yep. Youngkins, you're abstaining. Mm -hmm. Yes. Vice President Ando. Bill Hanna. First. She called you. Uh, Dave Youngkins. I thought he was nominated. Perfect. Councilman Hanna. Dave Youngkins. President Brennan. Dave Young. Okay, motion to pay the bills for the period February 9th through May to March 8th, 22, summarized as follows. I need a motion. Motion. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Pass it unanimously. <coughs> Motion to approve payroll for the period of March 16th to March, I mean it's February 16th to March 2nd, 2022. Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Any, any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, any additional comments? Chief? Yeah, sorry, I want to bring this up on my report, but I forgot. I just want to um, counsel to um, consider the plaques that are on the wall that we have here. The fire department plaques, the police plaques, the bottles are dead. <clears throat> Those have served in the line of duty and are uh, firefighters that have served for many, many years. They're on the wall. I want to make sure that I'm hoping that those plaques are going to go back on the on the new council chamber walls. Uh, uh, they I'm certainly sure. will. <clears throat> yeah. My father is right right there. So yeah, guaranteed yeah. that it'll be done. Yeah, I just want to I just want to remind everybody because that, that's that's an easy one to forget about. You know? No, 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 it's not forgotten. No, it's not. Right, you know, it's got to be on the council chamber. No, not forgotten. forgotten. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Hi, Emma Carter. 
621 Miss 13 bedroom. Let's see if anybody wants to buy my house. Um, so first, I was I'm not kidding. First, I was asked to bring up the potholes in front of the Bristol building. Is that what's called? Oh, the, there's been plenty of casualties, and these two lovely ladies wanted me to mention that. Yeah, I get complaints from them all the time too. I get complaints. For people that don't even live in one hall, but I were in the time. Oh, I don't think because they work out by the gym. Hall and they're infuriated, but yeah, I mean, they don't have to. Yeah, I mean, they right. work out. I know that. Okay, so then the other subject that I couldn't help but bring up is that we replaced the police officers, and I will list why. One, I'd like my hall to be proactive instead of reactive. I've had gun violence, <clears throat> drug deals, and not just the wacky tobacco. I have carloads of people showing up to fight people in households, and that's not just one household, that's at least two or three, depending on where I'm sitting. Uh, uh, people planning to kick other people's butts, drug seeking on my own front steps, drugs sold off my own front steps, uh, car crash into a tree by someone who was probably not sober, and uh, so that's all those were police call plus a couple other things which I don't really feel like mentioning in front of the camera. And um, so I know that there's reasons why we don't want to replace them. Uh, but then that brings me to the other subject and that is the, I'm going to be a party pooper on the grant for the parks and I think $220,000 to go to something else. So that's my opinion and I want it on the record. Um, council will not be the one I call if something bad happens on my street. It will be the police officers and they've always shown up. So that's my story. Yeah, we definitely want, I mean, I definitely want to but that's not what council is planning. I, I think hopefully we're No, there were that rumors that count that it was not gonna they were not gonna be replaced and so far they are not being replaced. And I can understand why. I do not I don't <coughs> like it though. And if if anybody disagrees with me, we can all have a camp out on my front yard in June. Anybody? Marshmallows? S'mores? Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. I have blow. I have tents. I have blow up mattresses. We can camp out, and you can enjoy the scenery. Fair question, uh, you Rick. What happened to the community? I mean, the, the meeting was supposed to have a community meeting down there about this. So many people can come as they want to and we, address we the need, different we, subjects. We need to do that, and I'm all in favor of it. Um, so I got a question about that. So my area, to be honest, probably will have a low attendance for that. So does that mean my concerns are dismissed? Absolutely not. Okay, because I'm, you know, I'm going to be here. No, no, we want to start in your area in his fire hall. Okay, but that doesn't mean that or, your or the community library. will or show the library. up. Okay. Can, Absolutely. I just want day, 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 day. I acknowledge all the problems. I acknowledge why. I I just uh, those gunshots in front of my house with people running away, not driving away, running away. I mean, that's when I come home from work. If my parents didn't break their remote control and I had to go buy another one right away, I would have been right there for it. So. Please understand that. Think about that when you go to bed at night. We that, do. That not your mud hall is my mud hall. Okay, thank you. Emma, I said it when I was running, and I say it again. Well, actually, we speak louder than words. I do agree with you. Okay, I'm just saying. And I, I hear what you're saying about maybe there won't be 50 people at that meeting. But that, that I feel matter. that we, that's not what we want. Okay. We but, want to provide. Right. Actions and, speak louder than words. That's all my, that's I all, that. I want you to know this based on record. So Emma, I'm yeah. going to speak to that subject right now just briefly. I've spoken with our new chief. We've discussed plans that we're going to be doing and changing of the police force. Um, 
no one's left the police force yet other than the chief, so not a whole lot has changed right now in this position. And we are working with the chief and the mayor. We, they have our support, believe me. I'm telling you as an ex-mayor and citizen of our town, we care just as much about your street as any street that I was born and raised in, Crawford Street, Mercer Street, and we feel for you for having that, and that, and I do feel <clears throat> rich voted being brought up, but we do need to have these meetings. The weather's just starting to break. We will be there, and we will we do want to start to do that. And I, um, I certainly feel we need to do that. I do want to say one other thing. Uh, I know I said we want we will be involved, but I think everybody in this room realizes that when the new four or three out of four came on on January. And oh, it was I'm not aging double hockey sticks. I understand. I was just saying there were so many fires, not not the, and we now have. Two of the fires, and God willing, we'll have a secretary to help Becky. Three of the fires, we're working on borough manager. We want to go further, but I'm not kidding. Some of us are putting in buku wires. God bless you for helping Becky, because I, I will tell them. There's a girl who volunteers to go down here and help her. By the way, if she can be down there, she's down there. You ought to give that girl a, a, a round of applause. But I'm just saying, my heart is we will come down, I promise. Okay. Anyone else have anything to say? Uh, sure. Yeah, real quick, this is easy. If somebody from council come down on East James Street and bring somebody down from the school board and find out whose trees they are. I got trees leaning all the way over on the street. Pro says it's the school, school says it's the borough. Three times they come down on a power lines down here, you got about five or six trees are leaning really bad. They're the Just schools. come down and take a look on it. They're the schools. I don't care who it is. But it's going to come down on somebody's power line. Tree, or somebody's trees power are power such power. A, a iffy thing. I mean, you look at it. I don't even think the it's garbage true. people can come down here and not hit a tree. Where is this at on James East Street? East James. That, that inside. Unfortunately, take a look. I run into this I problem will. a lot of times because neighbors call about a neighbor's tree. Oh, I get it. I go down, I said, what's wrong with the tree? Well, when the wind blows, it sways. Okay. That's what trees do. Well, it may fall down. Yeah, is it a living tree? <coughs> well, every tree could fall down. If we start cutting trees down, guess what? Who comes out? The, the unfortunately, they call them tree huggers. They say, you have to have so many trees. I mean, so you can't make anyone cut down a living tree. What you should call is the utility companies, because the utility companies will say, you know what, they may fall on our lives, we have problems, we could correct that problem before it happens. So the utility companies is actually your best bet. But I cannot make the school district cut down a tree because it's lean, because oh, yeah, 70% of it. I know 70% of the tree is lean. Call Duke A. Light, what they told me, wait till it falls. That's, that's unfortunate, yeah. And who they call? The fire company. We have to go down and cut the tree. Right, you would think, you go down right you would now, think they it. would cut the tree down. <laughs> yeah. and know that. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, I can't call still going to cut down a tree. Not tree. Not tree. I'm not a tree. It's a lot of tree. Only one saw on the ground. Hey, look at that. Look at that big, big tree on my street. That's going to come down eventually. Oh, my wife thinks my neighbor's tree's going to come down. Why can't you do anything about that tree? No, it's a living tree. I can't make my neighbor cut down a tree because I get his leaves or. You know, is, it, is it a borough property or right. is it a school property that the tree is on? It's a school property. It's school property? Yeah. Trim them. Well, school? school board meetings on Thursday, right? You can go past them, Bob. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, your best bet is your new telecom. But they already answered yeah. yes, his question. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wait till it falls down. Anyone else have anything to say? Well, one more thing yeah. I meant to bring up on my report, I, I forgot. I mean, it's in a week quick. I think we've got to start thinking about a community day. We haven't had one in a couple of years because of COVID. And uh, I've always been real involved in it. And I'm still willing to be involved in it. But I would like somewhere else 
the recreation committee, councils, or volunteers. But I think next month I'm going to have to look. I mean, with the finances and see, hey, we want to do a community day again. Something. I think we should. Tomorrow, I think. But maybe next month we can focus in on a day. Okay. And I'll talk to. I'll be reaching out to the council. Okay. Alice. Yes. Um, my thing is really petty after hearing this meeting tonight, but I want to apologize to Becky because my husband has been calling up to her that our garbage never gets picked up. And we found, I actually, I'm Don Myers, 224 West Miracle, and, and Ray actually said, like, you chuckled, and I totally could understand why you chuckled, because it is petty. But we've lived in our house for 47 years, and our garbage always got picked up. So I was trying to be really nice Monday morning, and I went outside pretending I had a bag to put it in the garbage so I could approach the gentleman about why he doesn't pick up my garbage. Well, according to the, bar the garbage bin now, you have to have your garbage at the end of your property in your alley, not tucked on your side so it's tidy. They want it right out at the end of your property. They can't walk on your property. And he made it clear to me that Becky, like Becky, you should have told me that. And I That's said- That's right. Right. So, should that be on our paper that gets mailed with our bill? I'll make an amendment to that. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's all these people that aren't getting their garbage oh, picked up. Oh, I know. There's only one or two that I know of. Well, I, they're actually, my next door neighbors didn't get picked up today. And they backed the truck up to get mine on Monday. But they did not take my next door neighbor. I recommend you call the mayor. Oh, I think that's like, the public works. I think you called the mayor last year when you were the mayor. <laughs> but the garbage men said that it's in their borough, con their contract, that they're not allowed on residence property. Bob, can you shed something on that? Shed on that? Yeah, right. Uh, oh. No. 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 No, but they all, I mean, I'm not arguing with it. I'm okay with it. But I never Now do. you know. Now I know now the right know. answer. Correct. And our but garbage bills will put that. that out on there. Bring your garbage to the street. Okay, anyone else? Thank you. Okay, one more, Michael. One more, just um, minor. After, at the workshop, uh, the engineer mentioned about uh, all the lights on Main Street, and I was kind of curious, and I started counting them, and then I noticed a lot of them, this is a Tuesday, a lot of the lights were on, and it was bright out, starting from like the mail, the post office, and then I went past on Thursday, and again, a lot of lights were on starting at, um, I guess you'd say Fox's, up to the park school. And the only thing I'm saying is as you're gonna be doing the work on the main street this year or next year, whatever, it between, public, school between public works and, and the engineering, there, I don't know if there's loose wiring or whatever, but I'm assuming we're burning lights during the daytime and I know we pay, I have a pretty good security bill, so just something to look at. I didn't know, these are the decorative lights, not the uh, utility lights. Uh, I should say not too far. We have one plugged in a week. <clears throat> do they do they work on plug. on a cell like a like a light sensor? No, the the the, uh, the street lights, the decorations are on the uh, plug-in on the decorative lights. It's an actual 110 outlet. They're plugged in there. So as long as there's use to that 110 outlet, those those lights are going to go on. Now, I don't know if it is. The timer that kicks on the lights that turns the power on to just the light bulb, or does it turn the power on to the outlet? I can't what remember. The, I'm I sorry. Well, I've seen the light bulbs on too. Yeah, no, no. Well, I, I'm timer, sorry. I'm the timer's going to not every once in a while have to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Mikey knows that very well too. I, um, I've had to deal with it. But it wasn't yeah, just I'm the not, decorations. I'm not talking about the Christmas lights. I'm talking about the actual the light, light fixtures band. with the fluorescent bulb or whatever type of bulb they have in them. Well, I mean, you mean the actual street light? The it's, yeah, it's, it, 
To me, it's a street light, but it doesn't belong to Duquesne Light. Yeah, it, it, it's miles. It's you know, but I, I'm sorry, I just know a little bit about it. It's the time. It's probably just a problem with the timer. Another, they, they frequently go out of whack and have to be addressed. Okay. Anything else? I need a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.